And then these last several decades have drifted to uh, away from uh, protecting our privacy. Today, your privacy isn't worth very much. The government can know anything and everything that you do. There's computer chips just about every place. Uh, if they need to, they can follow our cell phones and our automobiles and everything else. But we have it turned upside down. If you come across a whistleblower who say, we want to tell you the truth about what's happening in government, I mean, they can be charged with treason. So secrecy in government is what they protect, and they don't protect our privacy. It should be flipped around. We should have openness of government in a free society, and we should have privacy with the people. The major issue in the campaign has been the economy. I think it should be liberty, and the liberty deals with foreign policy and the economy, but basically on a superficial level, people say the economy is bad or off, what are you going to do, how are you going to create jobs, and uh, what, what is the solution, what wand are you going to wave, and what are you going to do the first day? Uh, well, you know, you know how long it took them to mess this thing up. It took them a few decades, um, but it wouldn't have to be that tough. What we're doing today is prolonging the agony, and it's going to continue for a long time. We prolong the agony and the depression. The Japanese are still into their, they're well into their second day, uh, decade, and now we're, we are admittedly into our fifth year now in this recession, even though they won't call it a recession. Uh, actually, I think our economy has been significantly slipping since the year 2000, since the NASDAQ bubble burst. We really haven't created any significant jobs in this last decade. And it's because we, we uh, have accepted a different principle of, on the business cycle. And people don't want to talk a bit about the business cycle. It's strange, and, some, and too many of us have been taught in school that the business cycle is a consequence of capitalism. That's why you can't just have capitalism, because the capitalism caused booms and busts and depressions. And, and uh, so, therefore, we always have to regulate and keep capitalism from failing. The most significant time in our history when that occurred was in the Depression. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the consensus then was that the depression came because uh, we, we had a gold standard and we had too much capitalism. So that was when we shifted from a, a more of a free market, market principle over into a Keynesian principle, and that is what uh, prolonged the agony and the suffering in the depression. But we, we haven't learned a whole lot, uh, at least uh, in Washington. I'll tell you one thing, the people are learning outside of Washington. Just like I said, people know now and understand about the Federal Reserve, and they know that we can't continue to do what they do. And the healthiest thing right now is that 88% uh, of the American people are very, very leery of everybody in Washington, D.C. And that, I think, is helpful. Christine, you because the government hasn't been honest uh, with the people. They, I mean, what about uh, all the stories we heard of why we had to go into war into Iraq? Weapons of mass destruction, Al-Qaeda. Did they tell you about the, the meetings that occurred for years before that? When are we going to take over Iraq? So those plans were all there. 9-11 just gave them the opportunity to go in. So they don't tell us the truth about that. Look how long it was for us to find out the truth about Vietnam. We lost 60,000 men over there. We're now uh, well over 8,000 that we've lost in the Middle East, fighting wars that we don't need to fight. 40,000 severely wounded Americans coming home that will need a lot of care. We have hundreds of thousands who now are applying for benefits at the Veterans Administration for head injuries and post-traumatic stress syndrome. And uh, this is based on people being told that the world would be blown up if we don't do it. And right now, those same people are building up the war fever to go to war both against Pakistan, even though we are technically at war because we're bombing that country. If somebody bombed our country, wouldn't you think we're at war? I don't know what's wrong with the suggestion. Most people understand the golden rule. So what would be wrong with the golden rule with the foreign policy? Don't blame any other country that we don't want them to do us. <laughs> they tell lies about uh, our CPI, Consumer Price Index. There's no inflation, so if you think your cost of living is going up, you can't believe that, of course. 
because the government says it's only going after 2%. Uh, yet the free market economist who measures the CPI the old way that the government gave up on, it's going up at 9%. And that's what most people feel like is happening. So with all the spending and printing press money, the cost of living is going to go up. That means the standard of living is going to go down. And I think this is the reason people on fixed retirements on Social Security are suffering so much because they just can't keep up with it. So there's uh, unemployment statistics. Uh, they, they have a new, and we're not in a recession, you know, that was over in a year. But nobody, nobody believes we're not in a recession. I, a lot of people believe we're in a depression. I think we are. I think we are in a depression. At least those uh, people that are unemployed are certainly in a depression. But they tell us, no, nah, unemployment's about 9 a little bit less than 9%. Oh, unless you count the people who are very underemployed and maybe working two days a week at McDonald's or something like that. Then, actually, uh, the, uh, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics will admit it's 17%. But if you go back to the old way of measuring and, and talk to all the people who just have given up, you know, they don't even look anymore, it's over 22%. And that's why people feel worse than the government tells us we're supposed to feel. So I think that one of the most important things a president could do or anybody in Washington is to tell the American people the truth.